بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضاه أما بعد In this class inshallah we're going to continue with the next issue which is المسألة الثالثة The third issue زمن الاعتكاف ومستحباته وما يباح للمعتكف The time for performing اعتكاف ومستحباته The recommended acts of اعتكاف وما يباح للمعتكف and that which is allowed for the معتكف to do while he's in اعتكاف So this مسألة speaks about three things We're only going to speak about the first part in this lesson inshallah The authors say زمن الاعتكاف ووقته The time for performing اعتكاف and its duration When do you perform اعتكاف and how long for The authors say المكث في المسجد مقدارا من الزمن هو ركن الاعتكاف Remaining in the masjid for a period of time, this is the pillar of i'tikaf. The essence of i'tikaf is to remain in the masjid for a given amount of time. فَلَوْ لَمْ يَقَعِ الْمُكْثُ فِي الْمَسْجِدِ لَمْ يَنْعَقِدِ الْاِتِكَافِ So if a person does not remain in the masjid for a, peri- a period of time, then there is no i'tikaf. He has not actualized the i'tikaf. وَفِي أَقَلِّ مُدَّةِ الْاِتِكَافِ خِلَافٌ بَيْنَ أَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ However, there's a different opinion between the scholars as to the minimum amount of time that a person is required to remain in the masjid to actualize the atikaf. There's a different opinion. وَالصَّحِيحُ إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهِ And what's correct, إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهِ أَنَّ وَقْتَ الْاِعْتِكَافِ أَنَّ وَقْتَ الْاِعْتِكَافِ لَيْسَ لِأَقَلِّ حَدٌ They've said that what's correct is that there is no limit to the minimum amount of time that you have to spend in the masjid there is no limit to it فَيَصِحُ الْإِعْتِكَافُ مِقْدَارًا مِنَ الزَّمَنِ so it's valid for you to perform i'tikaf for any amount of time وَإِنْ قَلَّ however short that time is إِلَّا أَنَّ الْأَفْضَلَ أَلَّا يَقِلَّ الْإِعْتِكَافُ عَنْ يَوْمٍ أَوْ لَيْلَ except that it's better for the duration to be no less than one day or one night so you can perform i'tikaf for however long you want, but it's better that you don't do the, do so for less than a day or night. لأنه لم ينقل عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا أحد من أصحابه الاعتكاف اعتكاف فيما دون ذلك. Because it's not being transmitted from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم nor any of his companions that they ever did i'tikaf for less than a day or a night. طيب. The reason why they mention less than a day or night, they've specified day or night. Is because of the hadith of uh, Ibn Umar that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was approached by Umar and he said to him, "I made another vow in Jahiliyyah that I will perform i'tikaf for a night, for a night. This is the minimum that's come in the narrations." And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to him, "O fi binadrik, fulfill your vow." This is reported by Bukhari Muslim. In the riwayah, in the version of Muslim, he said, "An a'taki fa yoman." That I perform, I vow to perf- to perform itika for a day. So this is where they've taken Layla and Yom from this hadith. Okay, so that's why some of the scholars they said that itika is an act of worship, and the details of this act of worship, where to perform it, how long, and so on. We have to look back to the Quran and the Sunnah. And if we look at the Quran and the Sunnah, we find that the minimum is a day and night. So that's why they've said that we should not go less than a day or night. However, some of the other scholars, they said, yes, that's true, but this is not a condition for i'tikaf to be valid. So to be on the safe side, if a person is going to perform i'tikaf, then he should do so uh, for a duration of a time longer than a day or night. So you don't go less than that, yeah, to be on the safe side. So that's in terms of the duration. In terms of duration, you should not go less than a day or less than a night. In terms of when in the year is i'tikaf to be performed, then... I'tikaf is not something which is confined to Ramadan As uh, most people incorrectly assume It's not something which is confined to Ramadan In fact it comes in the hadith of uh, Aisha radiallahu anha That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Performed i'tikaf during the first 10 of Shawwal Shawwal which is the month after Ramadan And this hadith is reported by Bukhari and Muslim And in the hadith of Ibn Umar The previous hadith Umar said I made a vow to perform i'tikaf during a night A night, any night and in the riwayah of Muslim, a day, any day. So the Prophet said, Awfi bi nadrik. And he fulfilled your vow. And he didn't say 
fulfill it in Ramadan. So you can perform i'tikaf outside of Ramadan. However, وأفضل أوقات الاعتكاف العش وأفضل أوقات الاعتكاف العشر الأواخر من رمضان. The best time to perform اعتكاف is during Ramadan. And within Ramadan itself, it's best to perform it during the last ten of Ramadan. So performing اعتكاف, the best time for اعتكاف is the last ten of Ramadan. Where do we get the proof for that? لحديث عائشة رضي الله عنها السابق. Because of the previous hadith of Aisha radiallahu anh, the one that we mentioned at the start. أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يعتكف العشر الأواخر من رمضان حتى توفاه الله. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم used to perform i'tikaf during the last ten of Ramadan until Allah took his life. At the start he was performing i'tikaf during the first ten. Then he moved to the second ten. Then when he found out that the Laylatul Qadr occurs during the last ten, he began performing i'tikaf during the last 10 and he was constant on that until he passed away sallallahu alayhi wa sallam طيب فإن اعتكف في غير هذا الوقت جاز if a person performs i'tikaf outside of this يعني the last 10 then it's permissible جاز ذلك that is permissible لكنه خلاف الأولى والأفضل however you're opposing what's best although it's permissible ومن نوع اعتكاف العشر الأواخر من رمضان صلى الفجر من صبيحة اليوم الحادي والعشرين في المسجد الذي ينوي الاعتكاف فيه طيب So if a person wants to perform اعتكاف during the last 10 When does it start? When does the last 10 start? There's a difference of opinion between the scholars Some of them And this is the opinion that's mentioned here Have said that it starts after fajr on the 21st This is what they're going to mention here Some of them have said that The last 10 If you intend to go into اعتكاف on the last 10 Then you should start on the 21st of Ramadan after praying Fajr. That's when you be it begins. And others have said that it starts at sunset on the 20th. The 20th. Once the sun sets on the 20th day of Ramadan, that's when yani, the last 10 begin. Okay. The scholars here have mentioned that the first opinion, that after Fajr on the 21st. So let's read what they've said. ومن نوع اعتكاف العشر الأواخر من رمضان whoever intends to perform اعتكاف on the last ten of Ramadan صلى الفجر he prays Fajr من صبيحة اليوم الحادي والعشرين in the morning of the twenty first في المسجد الذي ينوي الاعتكاف فيه in the masjid in which he intends to perform اعتكاف ثم يدخل في اعتكافه then he enters into his اعتكاف وينتهي بغروب شمس آخر يوم من رمضان and the last ten ends on sunset on the last day of Ramadan. Once the sun sets on the last day of Ramadan, whether it's 29 or 30, depending on the sighting of the moon, that's when the last 10 ends. Okay, so I mentioned the starting, there's a difference of opinion. With the end, most of them are agreed that it ends after sunset, because once once the sun sets on the last day of Ramadan, then it's a new month, Shawwal. With regards to this, those who say that it begins on the 21st after Fajr, they use as evidence the hadith of Aisha. كان إذا أراد أن يعتكف العشر الأواخر if he wanted to perform اعتكاف during the last ten صلى الفجر ثم دخل معتكفه he prayed fajr and then he entered his place of اعتكاف this is what they use as evidence the other side have said those who say that اعتكاف starts at sunset on the 20th they've said that the whole reason why the Prophet ﷺ performed اعتكاف during the last ten of Ramadan he was seeking ليلة القدر and Laylatul Qadr can be in any of the nights of the last 10. So if a person enters into I'tikaf on the 21st after Fajr, he's going to have missed the previous night, which is part of the 10. So they've said that the last 10 begins at Maghrib. That's when the last 10 begins, and that's true. It begins at Maghrib. That's their first argument. Now, in response to the hadith of Aisha, they have two responses. The first response is, that the Prophet ﷺ entered into i'tikaf on the 20th after sunset, but he spent his time worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during that night and only secluded himself after Fajr on the 21st. That's the first response. The second response is, they've said, the hadith of Aisha doesn't mention that he entered into his i'tikaf after Fajr on the 21st. It doesn't mention 21st. Why do we yani, confine it to the 21st? It's possible that it could have happened on the 20th. Why don't we say that on the 20th, he prayed Fajr and entered his place of i'tikaf, readying himself for sunset. And this is 
yani from the keenness of the Prophet ﷺ, that he didn't want to miss any part of the night from the last 10, that he began his i'tikaf prior to it, so he made sure that he was in the masjid settled and so on. It's not like someone who's rushing with his stuff, coming to uh, erect his tent and doing things late. He wanted to prepare, uh, giving himself enough time so that when the sun sets, he is ready to engage in worship. And this seems to be what's more correct. Wallahu alam. So if a person seeks to perform i'tikaf during the last 10 nights, then he should do so. Yani be ready to intend and enter into i'tikaf once the sun sets on the 20th of Ramadan. Tayyib. And in terms of when does it end, then we've already said that both sides have agreed that it ends once Ramadan ends. And that is a sunset on the last day. It could be 29 or 30. Tayyib. Barakallahu feekum. This is the lesson for today. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika. Shadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka atubu ilaik.